In concept D, we're just going to focus on molecular compounds and how to draw the Lewis dot structures for those compounds. So Lewis dot structure, when we're representing, representing these molecular compounds, are going to illustrate the sharing of just the valence electrons between the atoms. Now there's two kind of vocabulary terms that we're going to be using that I want you to be aware of. One is lone pair. This is an electron pair not involved with bonding. So these blue dots in this diatomic chloride uh, chloride um, is representing the lone pairs. So those are the ones that just belong to that single atom. They're not being shared. The bonding pairs, which are in red here, are representing those that are shared between the two atoms. So a single bond, which we talked about before, this is represented by either two dots between the two elements or a single line between them. A double bond, for example, O2. O2 only has access to enough electrons that would only put eight electrons around one oxygen and six around the other. So in order to accomplish complete octets for both, we have to then move one pair, an additional pair, to be shared between the oxygens. So O2 contains a double bond in order to complete the octets for both. A common triple bond where we're sharing six electrons involves N2, so diatomic nitrogen. So in this case, if we only use the electrons given to us, each would have six electrons around each atom, which doesn't satisfy their octets. So what happens is each nitrogen contributes an additional pair to the bond, which then creates that triple bond, which again then satisfies the complete octet, or each atom having eight electrons around it. So how do we actually determine when we need a double or triple bond or if we just need single bonds? So this is one strategy. There's different ways that you can go about doing this. I'm just going to show you one. I'll show you some other ones um, that you could potentially use if this one doesn't work for you. The first thing I want you to do is count all the total number of valence electrons that each atom in the compound contributes. This is exactly how many electrons we're going to use. Then we want to identify the central atom and then the terminal atoms. Hydrogen is always a terminal atom. Carbon, if present, will usually be our central atom. And molecules tend to be symmetrical. So if one atom is different from the others, then it's usually that central atom. So it's kind of like a hint for figuring out your central atom. Once you do that, you're going to then place one bond for each connection between just the central and the outer atoms. You do not connect the outer atoms to each other, just to the central. Remember, each line is representing one pair of electrons or two electrons. Then, any remaining electrons, you're going to distribute to the outside atoms in pairs. So always fill them in in pairs. Um, if you have any extra electrons, you're going to place them on the central atom in pairs. Or, if you've happened to run out of electrons, you're going to have to redistribute those electrons to make double or triple bonds. Usually, oxygen, nitrogen, carbon can often form multiple bonds if needed. And then you're going to do a final check. You're going to add up all the number of electrons in your compound to make sure that you're using the exact number of electrons that's allowed. And then you're going to check that the octet rule is satisfied. So go through, make sure all atoms have eight electrons around them, except for hydrogen, which should only have one bond and no lone pairs of electrons. That's a common mistake for students. So let's look at um, carbon tetrachloride. We have one carbon, four chlorines. So we're going to first go and add up all of our electrons. The four chlorines contribute seven valence electrons each. The one carbon contributes four electrons. So that gives me a total of 32 electrons to work with. Carbon's presence, so that's going to be our central atom. And then our chlorines are going to be our terminal atoms. Our next step is to draw a single bond between the central and terminal atoms. So I'm going to go ahead and draw again from the terminal to the central atoms, not connecting the terminal atoms at all. So now I have to account for the two, four, six, eight electrons that are in the bonds. So now I have a remaining 24 electrons. I always start by placing them on the terminal atoms on the outside. So carbon already has two, or I'm sorry, chlorine already has two electrons, so each chlorine needs six additional electrons. So I can place another six here, six around the second chlorine, around the third, and around the fourth chlorine. So that accounts for six times my four chlorines are the 24 remaining electrons. So I have exactly how many electrons here. Again, each chlorine has eight electrons. The carbon has eight electrons around it. And I have a total of 32 electrons. All right, let's look at ammonia, NH3. <clears throat> We're going to add up their electrons. We have five from nitrogen, and then each hydrogen contributes one. So we have a total of eight electrons. Nitrogen is going to be our central atom. Remember, hydrogens can never be our central atom. So it's going to go in the center. I'm going to start by drawing a bond between the central and each terminal atom. 
So that accounts for two, four, six. I have six electrons, so that means then that I have two remaining. So I'm gonna place those two then, because hydrogen is satisfied with the bond, it can never have lone electrons. Those remaining two go in the central atom, which is nitrogen. And when I subtract those out, I get zero. Each hydrogen is satisfied with the two electrons in the bond, and then the nitrogen has two, four, six, eight electrons around it. All right, let's do an example where we're gonna have a multiple bond. Here we have SO2, which I've already set up. Sulfur, again, remember, they tend to be symmetrical, so sulfur is different than the two oxygens, so that's gonna go in the center. I'm gonna add up each contribute six electrons, so I have 18 balanced electrons. We're gonna start with single bonds between the central and terminal atoms, so two, four, subtract out four, I have 14 electrons. So when I fill those in as pairs, I'm gonna place six of those around the one oxygen, and six around the other oxygen. So that gives me then 12 electrons, which then means that I have only two left. And those two extra electrons go on the central atom. But if I check, while well, each oxygen has two, four, six, eight, the sulfur only has two, four, six. So I've run out of electrons and I need to make sure I complete the octet for sulfur. So this is where we're going to rearrange electrons. I'm going to take one of the oxygens, and as a pair of electrons, I'm going to move them to create a multiple bond. So I'm going to take these two electrons, which I've just subtracted out over here, and I'm going to move them to make a line. Because oxygen still has its 2, 4, 6, 8, now sulfur has 2, 4, 6, 8. With honors, we'll get more into resonance structures, like why would the double bond be here? Can it also be on the right, which is the correct assumption. Um, so we'll get a little bit more into that tomorrow. But this is an example of having a double bond um, and how we went about doing so. We also need to be able to draw polyatomic ions. We mentioned this yesterday. Remember, polyatomic ions contain covalent bonds within them. So we should be able to draw those as well. Now, the only difference is that polyatomic ions have a charge. So based on the charge, we have to add or subtract electrons. So hydroxide, OH with a negative one charge. If I add up electrons, oxygen is six, hydrogen is one, and the negative one charge means it has an extra electron, so I have a total of eight electrons. Oxygen and hydrogen, there's no central atom because I just have two. I start with a bond between them, so I have six electrons. Hydrogen is satisfied with just the bond, so those six electrons are gonna go around oxygen, so I have zero electrons. They both have a complete octet, but with polyatomic ions, you can't stop there. You need to put parentheses around it, and then put the charge on the outside. All right, we're gonna do a lot of practices with this tomorrow in class and also the next couple of days. So you'll get plenty of practice and get comfortable with drawing these.